Hey, I'm Sybil Buck. Hello, fashion enthusiasts. Today I want to focus on Sybil because I want to start talking about models of the 90s. She has been referenced as the queen of grunge. This movement arose in the United States, so when she debuted in France, she easily stood out. I stuck my tongue out and he was like, what is this? Like, it was new in Paris. Where I was coming from in Boston, it was already a thing. But in Paris, it was really, really new. As far as aesthetics go, the grunge movement consisted of oversized t-shirts, hoodies, ripped jeans, and droopy beanies. As far as footwear, it was mainly Vans and Doc Martens. Sybil was instantly recognizable, not only because of her piercings, but also her fiery red hair, which she second-guessed about having. And then when I started modeling, I guess when I was about 17, I dyed it black because, you know, of course a model can't have bright red hair. And I always knew that I would dye it red again, but I thought I'd have to wait till after I'd done modeling. I don't know, I, I kind of woke up one morning thinking, what am I waiting for, you know? Like, this is the way that I want to look. The time is now. Her successful run in the fashion industry led her to post beside the designer Yves Saint Laurent himself. She was in advertisements for cosmetic lines for the likes of Givenchy and Paloma Picasso. She enjoyed being part of the avant-garde aspect of fashion. I'm more editorial than I am commercial. Some people ask me, like, don't you want to make a lot of money? If I do a day of editorial, I still make more than I did when I was a waitress. And it's a lot more fun. She posed in ad campaigns for Claude Montana, Rodier, Herve Leger, Nicole Miller, Rocco Barroco, and Balenciaga. The reason she achieved such diverse portfolio of work is due to her understanding that modeling is about molding into a style. It's a new challenge to, to see myself in those clothes, to understand how somebody that looks like me would be wearing those clothes, and then carry it off on the runway. You know, it's like, it's a really interesting thing for me that, that all these different styles take me for their shows, because each time I have to think of like, you know, I have to make it coherent for myself. I have to understand what I'm doing in the clothes, otherwise I feel ridiculous on the runway. I believe that Sybil's punk style led her to be a muse of Vivian Westwood due to her posing for various campaigns and having a handbag named after her called the Sybil Shoulder Bag. As she retired from modeling around 1997 and she saw the newer trends, she did not see herself fitting in with the new standards of beauty. I also left right when sample size became zero. When I was modeling, I was never less than a size six. I'm six feet tall, you know, that was super skinny. I was skinny, but like, I, I never had to be a size zero. And so I was kind of watching from the sidelines, you know, getting into my own thing, not paying that much attention to fashion. But when I would catch a glimpse of a fashion show, I felt like, wow, this is really a different era. Sybil's magazine covers reflected her style and the era when she found success. I do not think she landed any Vogue covers, which is kind of surprising. However, she landed various lifestyle magazines. She despises the elitist attitude that the fashion industry willingly promotes. And then there's the other side of fashion that is about exclusivity. And it is all about saying, I'm in the popular club. You can tell because I've got this logo or this bling or whatever, this I'm Ozempic skinny, you know, it, and that is a side of fashion that I, I just can't stand and I have never had any tolerance for it.